Everybody said I was going to try. I think I made it. I don't know. I hope I don't. But uh, in the 1980s, when I started managing the Cardinals, uh, Joe, uh, uh, we had a guy come in the Hall of Fame by the name of Enos Slaughter. He was selected in December, and he came to the winter meetings at uh, Writers' Dinner in January. And the first thing out of his mouth was, it's about time. Should have happened 20 years ago. I don't believe that at all. You know, any time is a good time when you receive an award like this. And uh, I am grateful to the commissioner's office, to the people that elected me, to all my buddies back here. I want to be known. I got three Hall of Fame players. And if all three of them hadn't played for me, I wouldn't be here today. I'd probably be back in New Athens, Illinois, digging ditches or something. But uh, and that's the way it would be. Now, I got to congratulate John, Bill. They were always at the top of their profession. And they rightly deserve to be here today, and I'm really happy for both of you. I got a player over here that I was sorry to see come to the Cubs, put him in my division. It was a little bit tougher to beat the Cubbies after Andre went there. He was a 5-2 player. He played hard. He had bad knees. I've never seen him not run out of ground ball. And I just admired the way he played baseball, and congratulations to you. Now, I saved Doug Harvey for last. And the reason for that is Doug and I didn't see eye to eye all the time. Doug was a great umpire, a great umpire. I mean, he is, I never got in trouble with him or arguments with him over balls and strikes, safe or out, fair or foul. It was always a day like today. He wouldn't put the damn tarp on. We'd send the... Uh, a message out to him. Fifteen minutes, severe thunder showers and lightning at Bush Stadium. And there was God. <laughs> and about fifteen minutes later, they put the tarp on, and the field was so muddy, it took two hours to get the field ready when he took the tarp off. That's how much rain it hit underneath the tarp. So, Doug, I want to say one thing. My sincere congratulations. You're a very deserving guy. It's sunny now. The screen's over. Don't put the tarp on. But one thing, please don't kick me out of Cooperstown. <laughs> you know, when something like this happens to you, you say to yourself, how did this happen? And then you start thinking about all the people, good people you work with, all the good people you work for, all the good coaches that work for you, and I'm not here because I'm a player. I'm here for, because of managing. And I had a lot of good players play for me. None of this would happen if it hadn't been for uh, so illustrious people that just helped me. I was a 17-year-old, 5'10", 150-pound outfielder from New Athens, Illinois. I signed a contract with the New York Yankees. I went to McAllister, Oklahoma. What a wonderful town. 12,000 people, a good place for a guy like me to, to break in. I played for a wonderful manager in Ho Vern Hoshite. He and his wife, Helen, treated me like I was their own. I remember one Sunday afternoon we had a night game, and he, they invited me to go to a chicken place, family style, with mashed potatoes and everything else. And when Vern asked me what I wanted to drink, and I said, well, I always drink a beer on Sunday when I have my dinner. He said, beer? He said, we've got a game tonight. I said, Vern, by the time I was five, I'm German. I had drank more beer than milk. Every time I have an evening meal, I said, we have, on Sunday, we have beer, generally fried chicken, mashed potatoes, or, or either potato salad. He said, okay. So he, had, he was my manager. They let me have a beer. Luckily, I got four hits that night. I never heard anything about it again. So that was very nice. But in the Yankee chain, I had a lot of people push me. Besides Hoshide and the great city of McAllister, which I love dearly and owe a lot to, Harry Kraft was my guy that was always in my corner. He kind of saved my career, claimed me on waivers when I wasn't going so good at Washington, I was able to get nine years. Wasn't a very good player, but I did get nine years in the big leagues and there was only 16 teams and 50 some minor leagues, and I got my pension. And uh, I was the kind of player everybody wanted, 
when they got me, they didn't know what the hell to do with me, I'll be honest about it. <laughs> so anyway, Harry Kraft was great to me. And I was wishing he would be here today, but Lee McPhail was the farm director. And he was always in my corner. Every time he'd come to one of the clubs I was playing with, he'd talk to me and was very good to me. He traded for me when he was the general manager at Baltimore Orioles. And I was just hoping he'd be here because he meant a lot to my career. And I came out of service in 54 during the Korean War. The Yankees invited me to the rookie camp, and that's when I met Stengel. And when I met Stengel, it was like an enlightening thing because I, I could go to bed at night, and instead of thinking about girls, I'd be thinking of what the hell he talked about all day. You know? <laughs> he had his own language, and uh, it, it took me hours sometimes to figure him out. But the big thing about Casey was, they thought he was a clown when they brought him back to New York, but Casey was an outstanding teacher. He was a very smart baseball man, and he and I became fa uh, fast friends, and I'm not going to tell the story, but I knew the reason that he t took a liking to me, and I was almost like a pet to him, he played with Buck Herzog, and I'm sure he thought I was his grandson. I'm sure he thought that. And I never told him any difference. He'd say, how's granddad? I'd say, oh, hell, he's great. You know, and that was a bit fun. So, you know, Casey and I used to sit in the, in the press room at the Colonial on spring training, and uh, every night we'd have a few pops and talk baseball, amongst other things. And Casey told me so many things that I've been using the rest of my life. But for some reason, he knew that I was going to be a big league manager. My high school teachers would have died if they had heard him say that. But the big thing is, he knew, and he wrote some pictures, autographed him, a great leader, and hell, I never let nothing him alive. But anyway, Casey told me so many things that became valuable to me. He knew, said, you're going to be a manager. You've got to learn how to handle the press. When I manage the Mets and you've got a bad team, he said, here's how you handle the press. He said, you're very nice to them. And then he said, you feed them, and you drink them. And you stay up all night with them, having a few pops. Put them to bed about 4.30, and by the time that deadline comes, they, don't, they won't even put the score of the game in. <laughs> well, that was the way to handle the Mets, so I'll tell you that. And then the other thing he said, you're going to get interviewed a lot. You know, after we didn't just have NBC, ABC, and CBS, and then ESPN, and then all the Superstation. Our jobs got a little tougher. We'd have to go out in the field. Instead of doing three interviews, a lot of times we'd do nine. And Casey said, always ask the guy when he's going to interview you how much time you got. And secondly, when he says 15 minutes, how many questions you want to ask me? Three. Now, he says, when he asks you that first question, you talk for 15 minutes, and you only get in one-third of the trouble. And that's what I've always tried to do. Now. Casey also told me this. He said, when you manage, you hire good coaches. Don't worry about those coaches taking your job. It, because he said, if you don't own the club or die on the job, you're going to get fired anyway, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so as smart as I am, most of it is because of Casey Stengel. He's been awful good to me. He's alive. I saw him three weeks before he passed away. I was coaching in Anaheim. And we remain great friends, and I've got numerous stories, but we don't have time for that because some of these guys have been pretty long-winded, and I want to catch up a little bit. But, but what, I want to say, what I want to say, the reason, another reason I'm here, because of my family out there, and because of the great fans of Missouri, Kansas City, and Cardinal fans, Al told me he was married to Louise for 55. My wife, Mary Lou's out there. We've got 57, so we got you. That's the first thing I ever led you in, I'll tell you that. My daughter, Debbie, here with her husband's Kirk, and they've got three children. My only granddaughter, she's my favorite, Kirsten, and her husband, John, and my great-grandson, Evan. Happy to see them. John, my, my ball player and his wife, uh, Maggie, John's playing ball for of all places, Chi Chi, California, and his manager is Gary Templeton, who I didn't have. Well, I had some trouble with him a little bit, but <laughs> Gary's been great to him. And then, of course, my, my oldest son, David's here with Karen. They got four boys. 
I got Jake and Catherine's here, and uh, I guess everybody's here. Uh, where's Ben at? Ben came all the way from Okinawa. Can you imagine? He flew here from Okinawa. He's in, he's in the Marines. Yeah. And then they got two young boys that are the apple of my eye. They live in Tulsa, Trevor and Jordan. And really, uh, now I look at uh, Jim. And Jim, uh, Jim and Annie are out there. And uh, they live in St. Louis. So I don't have to go as far to see the grandsons and everything. They got two wonderful kids and Trevor, I mean, <laughs> and Alec and Eric. And I just love them all so much. And you know, when you have something like this happy, happen to you, I got a great family, and the reason I got out of baseball when I did, I wanted to spend a little time with them, and I certainly didn't think I could find another Gussie Bush. And ever since December, every question that anybody asks me is this, what's it feel like to be a Hall of Famer? Well, I didn't know. I kept saying, I won't know till July 25th. Well, now I can tell you what it feels like. Being elected, to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, is like going to heaven before you die. Thank you very much.